Let a chopstick of length 20.32 centimeters have a density distribution function rho of x equal to 0.11x plus 0.28, where x is measured in centimeters from the left end and rho of x is in grams per centimeter. So let's find the mass of the chopstick. Now, if you've ever looked at a chopstick, you know that one end of the chopstick is thinner than the other end of the chopstick. So it's not like we can just calculate density times length and it's supposed to just come out that easy. I mean, the density obviously isn't the same because we have a function for it. Since uh, we, need, we need to understand how this density function works in order for us to orient our chopstick properly. So let's see, um, since as x increases, rho of x increases, because this is an increasing function. It's a linear function whose slope is positive. The smaller end of the chopstick needs to go on the left of our guide, of our uh, grid. All right. So if I say this is x equals zero, my smaller end of my chopstick is here, and my wider end of my chopstick is down here. And I know that the length of my chopstick is 20.32 centimeters. This is the x-axis. Now, it is always very important when you do problems like this, when you have to slice and you have to use integrals to do real life problems like this, putting it on a grid, drawing a picture, orienting yourself about how everything is working is very, very, very important. So this is how I've laid out my chopstick based on how rho of x is built. So I'm going to slice up my chopstick so that every slice that I make has about the same amount of density. So you know that if they're pretty thin slices, then each of these slices will have about the same density. Not from each other, but that slice will have its own density, that slice will have its own density, etc. Okay, now we're going to worry about finding the mass on one of these slices. Now I know that mass is density of the slice times the width of the slice. Now how do I know that? Now normally we sometimes we use area, sometimes we use volume. In this case I'm just using width. And why is I why am I just using width? Well, the reason why is because density is calculated in grams per centimeter. And if I want to multiply density times something so I end up with grams, which is what the mass is supposed to be, that's a unit of mass. Then I have to multiply it times centimeters. Grams per centimeter times centimeter gives me grams. Units of measure here, very important in getting the problem to work. Very important. So now I know what I have to multiply by. So let's just talk about the density of my slice. Is given to me as 0 0.11 x plus 0 0.28 and the width of my slice well let's see if this is x and this is one end of the slice and this is the other end of the slice you can call this length here delta x you can call this length here also delta x this length here it doesn't matter where you put your slice the width of every slice is going to be delta x a very small number and delta x unit of measures in centimeters, density is grams per centimeter. Now, if I want just the mass on the slice, I'm going to multiply density times width, and that gives me grams in the end. Now, that's just the mass on just that one single slice or any of these single slices. We're going to, you always worry about the slice, just one slice, focus on it, calculate the, the thing that you're supposed to calculate on the slice, and then you worry about setting up the integral. 
Now that I have the mass on one of that slice, I'm going to sum up all those slices, the one that I chop at zero and the one that I cut at 20.32. So 0.11x plus 0.28 dx is going to be the mass, total mass of the chopstick. And I told you for now, just go ahead and put them in your calculator. If you want to practice doing them by hand, that's fine. It's for my class. Um, but I do know I you got a number approximately equal to 28.3992 grams.